Okay, so today we're going to do Bayes' theorem. And I'm super excited because I just love it. Why? Because we do not need this formula. This is the scariest formula in the whole world. And I'm sure you agree with me. But no more. You can say goodbye to this formula forever. So what we're going to do is I will solve a couple of problems here to show you how to do it. Then you're going to do two problems. Solution is provided. And trust me, in 15 minutes, you're going to say, hey, guess what? I know Bayes' theorem. And tell the whole world that you know, you know Bayes' theorem. Impress everybody. Okay? So let's start. So the first problem we have is about machine learning kind of stuff there, like how to know which is a junk email. So for instance, let's say some of our emails are junk mails. And the junk mails typically will have words like discount, sales, deals and so on and so forth but not every email that has those words is junk email so you cannot simply delete all the emails with a discount in there because some of them are good emails so how do you find the probability of a good email given it has word discount and etc that's what Bayes theorem is so we have the prior probability here which is 20 percent which means junk mail 20% in general. So now we get new information. The new information is that this email has the word discount in it. Okay. Now the probability of junk email has gone up from 20% to much more. How much more? Okay. And that's the new probability we're going to find out using Bayes theorem. So basically we are doing junk mail given the word discount in it. What is it? Junk mail itself is 20%, but junk mail given discount has gone up. How much more? So we are going to solve this problem in two minutes without formulas. So here we are. Let's suppose we get 1000 emails, 20% junk, 80% good. So here's my drawing. 800 good emails, 200 junk emails. Now remember, Junk emails have, 30% of them have the word discount. So 60 of the junk emails will have the word discount in it. And 2% of the good emails have the word discount in it. So overall, we are looking at 16 plus 60, 76 emails with the word discount. Okay. Now, how many of them actually are junk emails? Well, 60. So probability of junk email given it as a discount is 78.95%. And that's Bayes' theorem, pretty much all done. Similarly, if, a e if an email has the word discount in it, what's the probability? It's not a junk email, but that basically 21%, which is 100 minus 79%. And so what we've done so far is our Prior probability is 20% being a junk email. But given it's a discount word in there, now it has gone up to 79%. So this is what we call revised probability. This is the prior probability of 20%. Revised is 79%. And what's the probability that an email will have discount in it word? 76 emails we get in a day right there out of 1000. So that makes it 7.6% email with discount word in it. And this problem is done. We're going to go to the next one. So the next problem now is about false positive, false negative, typical in a medical test that you see. So let's suppose this create a scenario. In a town, 23% of the population has COVID-19 infected. Okay. Now there's a test that can tell you whether you are infected or not infected. But the problem is, the test is not accurate. It gives you false positive, it gives you false negative. So here's the question. If Jack tests positive, what's the probability he is infected? He actually is infected. If Jack tests negative, what's the probability he is not infected? And so on and so forth. Okay. So let's start. False positive, false negative. What does that mean? Well, that basically means is that if the test result shows positive, there's a 20% chance that a person who's not infected 
will test positive. That's false positive, wrong positive. False negative basically is a person is not infected, a person is infected, but test result shows 15%. So these are the errors. Then we have 85 and 80%. So which basically means that 85% of the time results are good if you're infected. 80% is good if you're not infected. But 15 and 20% are the mistakes, type 1, type 2 errors. But that's not a topic here, so I will not go into that right now. Now suppose we have a town of 10,000 people. You could be 1,000 people, could be 48 people, doesn't really matter. Pick a number which has large enough to so avoid fractions. I don't like fractions. Okay, so in our town now, these are infected, 2,300, and these are not. But no one knows, that's the problem. So, you do a test. 85% of these will show positive. That's the correct result. And 20% will show positive, that's wrong result. Because they're not infected, but it shows. Okay, so in this town, 3,500 will test positive. About 35% will test positive. But not everybody is infected. So out of those 3,500, these are actually infected, which means there we are, our Bayes theorem. Probability of infected given positive is 1955 over 3495, which is 56%. So the reverse of it, not infected given positive, and that will be 44% which is basically 100 minus 56%, 44%. And Bayes theorem is done, finished. So the prior probability is 23%. But if you test positive, the new information tested positive, then the revised probability is 56% you're positive. And that's what it is. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to say goodbye, forever goodbye, to this Mr. Formula. And you can do it. And tell the whole world you could do it. So here's your first problem. Work on it. And then stop the video. Come back to it. Solution is there. So ready for the solution? There we are. And here's the solution. Did you get it? Hopefully you did, but we have one more. And this one is number two right here. One second, read it, figure it out. That's part of your job. I'll pause for a few seconds here so you can record information. Stop the video, come back to it. And let's see, now let's go for this solution here. And here we are. So, if you could do both the problems, maybe in second try, you're done with the Bayes theorem. Trust me, any problem in the world of Bayes theorem type can be done without a single formula. Just simple logic, math, common sense. And I hope you do everything this way. And that's how I teach in my classes anyway. So, goodbye to Mr. Bayes now. And we simply come to common sense. And this is where I stop. Tell the whole world that you can do it now.